From the gruesome and ghoulish stylings of the original arcade game and its PC Engine port, to the chaos-driven blast processing enhanced sequels on the Genesis, these Splatterhouse games are nothing to miss out on, as Rick's excursions with the supernatural are some of retro horror legend. And while those games are plenty worthy of a video, in true retro Drew fashion, I'm not looking at any of those games. Instead, let's peel back the curtain, draw our summoning circle underneath a full moon for the spookliest of seasons, and check out the often forgotten Famicom spin-off Splatterhouse Wan Paku Graffiti. Summoned in 1989 by Namco, this SD version of Splatterhouse turns the series on its head by dialing back the creepiness in favor of cranking up the wackiness, resulting in a bite-sized version of the first game that offers up a hefty serving of creative and zany hack and slash that must be experienced by not just fans of the series, but horror fans alike. As is tradition with these Splatterhouse games, our adventure begins with Chibi Rick busting out from his grave to greet Jennifer once again. Although it seems he's not the only one ready to rave from the grave as old Pumpkinhead pops out and takes her away. And just like that, Rick is off to make the undead even more dead. Spanning a total of eight spooktacular stages, you are left with only your trusty meat cleaver to wield off hordes of creepy crawlers. Whether it be muckmen, bats, spooky skeletons, or ghouls, you'll have no shortage of monsters to cut down. As far as gameplay is concerned, it's not too complicated. You can slash or jump, and that's about it. But Namco did throw in a neat leveling system that really incentivizes you to take care of every fiend you can find. As you'll notice, your number in the top left-hand corner will go up with every kill. Reach your goal, and your health bar increases. Keep this up across the whole game, and you'll be stacked to face the final few levels. With the levels in mind, you are treated to quite the gallery of ghastly locales, as you'll traverse ghoul-filled graveyards, shark-infested waters, you'll learn to be garbage of cesspool as you hack rats in the sewer, visit Camp Diamond Lake, and even wind up living in a devil town, at least until you take care of all of its inhabitants. In true wacky Japanese fashion, these levels stuff oodles of macabre content into them in assurance that you're never bored and will always have something new to see. The perfect example being what greets you towards the end of the first level. You know, it's only Dracula Michael Jackson dancing to Thriller with four muckmen before you battle it out. Oh my god, Japan, you just don't miss! Trust me, Wan Paku Graffiti has what feels like an infinite amount of surprises up its sleeves, and evokes that of an I Spy game for horror fans, as you'll constantly come across parodies of iconic monsters during your residency. Some highlights include Reagan from The Exorcist, the Wolfman who transforms right before your very eyes, a careful dip in your toes into the water because Jaws might want to nibble, we have multiple poltergeists, a poultry geist, yep, you heard me right, we got chickens, a poor girl who must have eaten some really bad Chinese food because she's bursting with face huggers, a scientist turning himself into a fly, and my personal favorite being a close encounter with the killer from the underrated slasher, The Burning. With all this opposition on your plate, thankfully you're periodically aided on your merciless journey with a handful of treats. While it's few and far between, you will occasionally get your hands on a shotgun to make quick work of certain sections, but outside of that, you'll have to make do with your hatchet. But you will find some assistance in the form of candy and burgers for extra health, which is much needed as you can go from full health to dead rather quickly if you're not careful, as your iframes are almost non-existent. But if you do wind up falling victim to a rotten situation, a total of four continues, and a blissfully simple four-number password system makes your fight against the undead an easy triumph. Dripping with atmosphere and oozing that undeniable chibi charm, Splatterhouse Wan Paku Graffiti is an 8-bit sojourn that perfectly distills a certain retro horror feel befitting of the Halloween season. Its various referential escapades, backdropped by welcome to cliches of the genre, make it a must-play for any fan of classic horror and 8-bit games. And for once, on this channel, doing so is not a chore. The game has maintained a somewhat low price of $30 to $40 if you want an original copy. Translated repos also won't break the bank if that's the route you want to go, 
However, I highly recommend playing the version found on the Namcot collection for Switch, as I found it seems to play a little better than the original. I don't know why, but your hitbox seems smaller and your attack range feels bigger, making for a smoother overall experience that is also aided by save states and a rewind feature if needed. Plus, it's cheaper and you get 9 other games with it, so pick that up if it's an option for you. And as an added Halloween bonus, if you find yourself wanting more after chopping through Wanpaku Graffiti, let me say that its chibi charades pair excellently with Monster Party, particularly the Japanese beta that was dumped a few years ago, as both are quite comparable and feature plenty of movie references sure to satisfy any horror buff. And with that, Happy Halloween! Hey, thanks for watching! If you liked this episode, consider checking out these other videos right here, or even subscribing. Also, if you'd like to throw me a couple of bucks, you can support the show on Patreon.